Good afternoon, Pastor David. Hey, John. Welcome, everybody, to a random moment with Pastor David Unfiltered. Uh, Wednesdays, you've been doing, well, actually just started a series on marriage and the family, and, and that's what I like to speak about today. Uh, and then on Thursday, we'll talk a little bit about what you're going to teach on on Sunday. And so since tomorrow is our Wednesday evening service, and, and, and we just, have communion too. And we have communion tomorrow, so nice. invite your friends. I mean, it's always a sweet time mm -hmm. when we have communion with mm -hmm. the church family. Yeah. Uh, even on, on uh, even with the series like this, it's it's a sweet time with the worship. And yeah, except you keep asking for real wine at communion. I'm telling you, no, John. <laughs> I no. want to share with it really quick, Pastor. There was uh, so when we uh, were storing the communion prefab cups, yeah, we had them on top of the fridge in the kitchen. Uh -huh. Well, the top of the fridge gets warm, and so a lot of the uh, cups were fermenting. Oh my and goodness! And so one of the the men had it, and some of the guys were looking at it like, "What are you trying to do?" To it? <laughs> really, it fermented. <laughs> so it's fermented grape juice. <laughs> That's <lot> terrible. <laughs> That's terrible. So you took them all home and disposed of it, right? What a nice guy you are. I had to take one for the team. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure you, did. you know, pastor, as we as you're now in marriage and the family, and tomorrow we're uh, looking at wives submitting to. The husband and that's a ten part series. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to speak a little bit more and get your feedback on the family as a unit. You know, uh, you've been married for so many years and, and you've you probably understand a lot more the value of the family unit and the things that can come into the family, into the marriage that will actually pull. And, you know, I think about it in my life, I had to strike a balance, and you've been really good at telling me this, because I love doing ministry, I have a tendency to want to dive in. But yet I have wife and kids at home, mm -hmm. and these are the things that will pull on a family and affect the actual family unit mm -hmm. versus then making it better. Can you speak a little bit about that, Pastor? To, to some degree. Um, you never want to have your children or wife resent ministry. You never want them to. I think it's part of what happens when you're full-time in ministry, to be honest with you. But um, you never want to create an environment where your children feel that they've lost their dad, and uh, especially when they're small, because they, they don't realize that daddy is serving the Lord and it's part of the sacrifice of his life. And so it's a very good and very important thing to have a wife who is very supportive mm -hmm. of your call uh, my wife has always been very supportive of, of my call to the Lord uh, from the time she became my girlfriend. Marie has been my, at my side supporting me in every way. You know, didn't even realize that she was beginning her life of ministry while she was dating me. And she's never stood in my way um, you know, complaining or, or getting upset or making me feel bad. She's never done that. She's, she's been really quite a, uh, a warrior bride when it comes mm -hmm. to those things. She really has, John, because she knows the call that God placed on my heart. And so she freed me up to, to follow that call. And in the first portion of our ministry in the earlier days, I had opportunities handed to me to do ministry in China, to go to... Uh, to India, to the Philippines, mm -hmm. various places to minister and, and began to take the opportunities as they were handed to me to do that. But after a while, after a few years of reaching out, going out, doing ministry in various lands and all, I began to realize that even though I, I did the very best I could as a father to, to care for the home and the children, giving them devotions every night and bringing them to church. I've said to the fellowship here that my children basically were seven-day-a-week Christians as I raised them, meaning that five days out of the week they got devotions. I would give them devotions. If I was not there, Marie would. And then the other two days of the week were, were Sunday and Wednesday. We have Wednesday night services and Sunday services as well as Sunday nights. So they were saturated in the things of the Lord from an early age, which didn't guarantee that they wouldn't taste the world, which they did. But it was also the, the strength that brought them back to, to where they're at now in, in their awareness of their own personal walks with God and their ministries. And so 
it was a fine balance that that Marie and I working together tried to find to be able to prioritize our children's lives in terms of their needs for for their dad and my influence and my presence, my ear when they needed to speak. It was a fine balance and it took a while for me to learn it because as a aggressive for the kingdom as I was especially in the early days of of wanting to travel, wanting to to go to other places and bring the gospel, England and various places I got chances to do that, Austria and others, um, I, I had to make sure that at, I didn't lose my children as I pursued the kingdom and that's kind of a large statement to make by itself and I know it could be misinterpreted but I, I came to realize that there were some things that that were really personal desires on my heart that were not necessarily something that would benefit my children. So our church was booming, it was growing, I was gaining a lot of experience, I was speaking in a lot of places and getting opportunities to travel to other countries and all of that and I, I, I put a stop to that in my own life, John, and in doing so I in, it voluntarily in some ways uh, short, short circuited some of the path that I was going because at the end I realized that the Lord doesn't necessarily need me to go certain places. There are so many others who are able to and me, I, I, I wanted to concentrate on being a, a better father, a better husband and uh, eventually becoming a grandfather uh, that which happened obviously and, and gave me opportunity to to love them as the elder of the family and so I, I, I believe that that my ministry is to Jesus first scripture teaches that but I have a wife to cover I have a family to be a covering over and grandchildren to be an influence to as well as a congregation that looks to me to be here to be present with them and minister to them and uh, so I, I decided that the best thing I could do is is be the kind of man that would make my daughters say uh, that's what a man's supposed to be or to be the kind of man where my sons would say that's the best man I know and he's a model for me which you know my kids yes. and I, I would say that to some degree uh, I, I have seen success in that. My boys especially, um, you know, have, they love their daddy. And um, they, they, you know, they want, they want to be like me. And, and to me, that's, that's what it should be because I wanted to have the character of my father, you know, and my dad wanted the character of his father. I think that's how God ordered the family, John. And so... We'll be speaking about the relationship tomorrow of a, of a wife and her husband, you know, what does it mean to submit? And, and um, you know, men's responsibility and encouraging that. It's a very important subject right now, especially in a time when men and women and children are being lied to and confused you know, about their genders and about their roles. And uh, it's not as if I'm gonna touch on all of those things, but it's very common for all of us to know that there's a lot of gender confusion, a lot of role confusion, you know, and um, things of that nature. I'll be approaching some of those subjects or some of those topics um, as I go through the study. So tomorrow I talk to the ladies who are simply, it's one of the scriptures that even unbelieving men know, you know, I don't know aren't wives supposed to be submitted to their husband, right, you know? Um, and, and yeah, but what are husbands to do to encourage a woman to, to voluntarily subordinate herself to the headship and leadership of this man? So we'll be looking at that as a package. So tomorrow I'll be speaking on women, but the next week we'll spend some time with the men. Look forward to it. And, and as you mentioned, church family, as Pastor David mentioned, we'll have communion after mm -hmm. the Bible study. And so invite your friends to come out and join us. You know, one of the things, uh, not in it, I don't want to take the time. We're just looking forward to your study tomorrow, and we'll keep it at that. And uh, and again, fa church family, 7 p.m. Uh, Wednesday evening, and we'll be in the chapel yep. this week. 
Uh, and so excited to have you guys come out. July 10th, we're having our Israel informational trip. Yes. Uh, Inspired Trouble will come out after second service, July 10th. If you're still interested, uh, you don't need to sign the this uh, online or interest list. Just come. Just come Just to show up meeting. and check it out. And we'll have some questions. Or we meeting. have over 200 people yes. interested, which means maybe you and I will go. <laughs> 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 Only two out of the 200. <laughs> Unless Marie makes me take her. <laughs> thank you, church family. Pastor David, thank you so much. Right, and yeah. church family, we look forward to seeing you. God bless you.